Everybody ready? Let's begin, okay? Well, and we will do it like we love to do it, actually. We will say to everybody, Shalom. Shalom Alechem. Shalom means peace. And Shalom Alechem, you know, it's our wish for peace for everybody. On behalf of Mashaf, the Israeli Agency for International Cooperation and MATC, Mashaf Center for Agricultural Training, we are so happy to have you here with us. So welcome to you all. And thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Evelyn Rosenthal. I am the Deputy Director of MATC. With me together, my colleague Shlomo Benshin, and we together, uh, we will manage this uh, online meeting. Um, maybe many people don't know us, so some words about us. Uh, MATC is one of Mashaf's professional centers. We are dealing with agriculture, water, and environmental issues. Then we have the Golda Meir Center in the city of Haifa, and they deal with community, gender, and innovation. And the third center is uh, the Ofri Center, who is uh, in charge of education. So all of all three together, we are speaking about development and mainly rural development. And we are for sure trying to work together with you all, trying to do a better world. Uh, our center is based in Kibbutz Shfaim, and uh, we are very, very proud of the 65 years of sharing Israel's agricultural knowledge with professionals from the five continents under the umbrella and guidelines of Mashaf, which is part of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs in Jerusalem. As you know, and due to the present situation in Israel today, all our training uh, programs here in Israel. Is, please try to stay uh, with the mic close. So due to the present situation today in Israel, all our training programs are on hold and hopefully, hopefully peace will reign soon again and we will be able to return to our normal activities and we will be able to host you here for our uh, normal training programs in Israel and share our experience and show you how the desert is blooming. For the moment, we are thankful for these online opportunities for meeting you and sharing with you our experiences in this way. So, before going to our presentation of today, which is very special, uh, let me tell you that we are recording the meeting and the, the video will be um, uploaded to our YouTube page. At the end of the presentation, we will share the link and you will be able to find this presentation and lots of others that we did in the last years. Uh, questions. Um, we will open for questions and answers after Guy presentation. Um, and let's go. Let's go to our professional meeting of today. And let me tell you that um, we are very happy to continue the discussion about pest and disease management. We began last week with a presentation uh, by Giora Tesler, uh, introducing us about uh, pest and disease monitoring. The video is already in the YouTube page. And 
today we are very, very um, honored to host Guy Engineer, uh, Guy Sela. Um, let me tell you something about Guy. Guy is an entrepreneur and expert in agriculture. We know about his significant contributions to av advancing sustainable farming practices and technologies. As the CEO of Yields Up, an artificial intelligence-based crop management platform, he is at the forefront of integrating artificial intelligence with agriculture in order to optimize farm management decisions. His leadership in the agricultural sector has led to development of innovative solutions that aim to increase efficiency, productivity, and sustainability on farms worldwide. It's now my pleasure to invite Guy to introduce us to this interesting new era of artificial intelligence applied in agriculture. And Guy, the floor is yours. Wait, I have to uh, give you uh, in. Yeah, now you can hear me, I guess. Thank you, Helene. Um, yeah, to allow me. So, uh, yes, nice to meet you all, everyone. Um, I will skip introduction about myself because I didn't already did the introduction. So we'll just deep dive uh, into the, uh, the presentation. Um, so I'm uh, very excited uh, to be here today, obviously. Um, and basically today we're in a very exciting uh, era in, uh, in agriculture. Um, we're really seeing a transition, a shift, a change that we haven't seen for uh, quite a while. And this is what we'll uh, discuss today, artificial intelligence which is a game changer in pest and disease management. It actually a game changer in, uh, in agriculture in general. And I'll touch some additional uh, topics briefly because the, the focus today is on pest and disease management, but, but we'll see uh, more, uh, more of that. So um, the agenda for the presentation today is we'll start with the, with the global challenges or the actual uh, challenges that agriculture uh, faces uh, uh, today, uh, mainly regarding pests and diseases. And then I will uh, go through an introduction to AI, artificial intelligence uh, in uh, agriculture, why it's a game changer, what it offers. We'll touch a little bit about the technology because I, uh, I meet many people, not all know exactly what artificial intelligence uh, really is and how uh, it works. So we'll touch it a little bit. Um, about uh, why is it different, right? And what makes it different than other uh, technologies and what enables uh, today to us today to use artificial intelligence. And uh, after that, we'll have a brief uh, demo of a uh, Yields app, which is a crop management platform that we have developed based on artificial intelligence uh, using most of the tools that you'll see uh, uh, today and touching different agronomic practices, pest and disease management, a crop nutrition and a, a irrigation and crop monitoring. So we'll see a part of that. So let's uh, deep dive into the uh, presentation. Uh, I will, of course, uh, uh, answer questions uh, at the end of the uh, presentation, and we'll be happy to be in touch with, with you guys. Below. So um, main challenges in agriculture today uh, are basically, you know, a soil health and degradation, water scarcity, uh, and pests and diseases, which are, is our topic uh, uh, today. All this one affects food or food security and is also affecting and is being affected by the uh, climate change that we're uh, experiencing. So specifically about uh, pests and diseases, pests and diseases, they uh, cause a uh, responsible for losses of between 30 to 40% uh, percent, uh, of uh, crop yields. Um, by the way, in, in money, that means uh, over almost half billion dollars uh, annually. And that's a result of uh, different, um, there are different reasons for that. 
uh, inadequate pest and uh, pest and disease management practices, uh, resistance to to pesticides, um, lack of early detection, and of course climate change, which is uh, and we see that we see that in many places it's a, a significant uh, factor here. So just to see some brief uh, examples of damages caused by uh, pests by diseases, I just chose some uh, specific ones. Uh, the uh, let's see the economic uh, impact of fall armyworm on uh, on corn. Uh, we can see that it causes damages of uh, about four hundred million dollars a year in the United States uh, alone, and of course in other countries in Ghana, in Zambia. We see here figures over a uh, almost two hundred two two million two hundred million dollars and more. Um, Another crop, which is, okay, corn, we all know the corn, but there are also the tropical crops, which are uh, not less important, a uh, coffee, which we all love. And uh, so uh, the, some countries reported over 96% damages, crop losses, uh, not on average, but there were incidences due to the coffee berry borer, which is a kind of a bill that actually penetrates into the coffee bean when it's still a, a soft and actually uh, completes its life cycle within the, the coffee bean, the coffee fruit. You cannot see that on the uh, image here, but uh, on the picture, but it digs a small hole, drills a small hole in the fruit and completes its life cycle within the, uh, the fruit. And of course, uh, is responsible for substantial um, damages in the different, uh, different countries. Um, so, uh, for example, Ethiopia, there are 60% uh, crop losses due to this uh, uh, beetle, this this pest. Uh, it's very common in, uh, in Latin America. Uh, this picture we took it in, in Colombia when we visit, visited the uh, coffee plantations in um, in Colombia, and the damages there are uh, quite uh, similar, significant, and it's a real uh, challenge. And today we'll see how artificial intelligence can help with that. Um, other examples. The banana uh, fusarium wilt, right? For instance, I, I chose this kind of crops because you know it's easy to talk about rice and corn and the soybeans, but uh, also in these uh, tropical crops, uh, we we see uh, significant uh, losses due to to this, uh, this this disease in different countries uh, in the world. We see it reaches almost uh, 20 and uh, 20 percent, and that's very and significant. This is all information from the uh, FAO. Um, now, I mentioned uh, climate change, and climate change today is a real catalyst for uh, pests and diseases. Because of the rising temperatures, we see more fast development, faster development of uh, pests and diseases. They complete their life cycles uh, faster, and they also occur. They appear in places where they didn't and um, they weren't active uh, before. Also the precipitations, uh, the altered precipitation patterns, they also change. I gave the example of the um, corn berry, berry borer before, and that's also very interesting because it's also affected by precipitation because precipitation in this case affects flowering of coffee. So when the flowering time changes, also the, the um, time of or the, the, the window a, a time in which the a, pest appears is different. It changes, changing due to, to climate change. Um, and of course, that also climate change poses a stress on uh, plants, which makes them more uh, susceptible to uh, pests and, uh, and diseases. And, and yeah, and then we see also migration um, of pests to different locations, Pests that didn't appear in certain uh, certain regions, locations suddenly appear and suddenly pose the threat. All right, even if they were there before, it could be that they now attack at a specific uh, a crop growth stage and um, cause uh, substantial uh, damages. So climate change is definitely a catalyst here uh, for um, pests and diseases, um, and climate change is in some ways it's almost uh, not predictable. So that's really a problem. All that affects um, food security, which means not just the crop yields, but also the, um, the quality uh, of the crop, the nutritional values, 
uh, of the, the crop, all that affects a food availability and increases the, the vulnerability of the food system. Um, now, um, farmers, if we take it now from the global level to the individual uh, farm level or to the individual farmer, uh, farmers have to make uh, hundreds of complex daily decisions under ever-changing environmental conditions and many uncertainties because we have those ever-changing environmental conditions. And in farming, as you all know, there are many, many uncertainties and uh, farmers need to make a lot, lots of decisions under these conditions and those decisions. And in fact, they cumulatively, they affect the food security and of course they affect each uh, a farmer uh, individually. Um, now, Jorge, now I'm going to start a little bit to talk about artificial intelligence and where and uh, how it became a uh, possible, available, and et cetera. So uh, today, unlike, I don't know, 10 years ago, I would say uh, there are hundreds of different uh, technologies for collecting uh, data uh, from the field. We have sensors, uh, whether it's soil sensors, leaf sensors, um, meteorological stations, drones, and if we go higher, we have the uh, we have uh, satellites. Um, so there is a lot of information that is and data that is uh, collected. Uh, on the other side of the spectrum, we also have very good technologies today for uh, applying uh, inputs in a very precise uh, manner, okay? Fertigation systems, automated fertigation systems, um, GPS uh, guided machines and uh, tractors, um, variable rate fertilizers, variable rate uh, pesticide application and all that. Uh, drones, of course, that can uh, apply uh, pesticides or any other products in uh, two specific areas of the uh, of the field, um, so there is we have all this uh, technology, but uh, what didn't change yet is uh, or didn't change dramatically yet is the way that farmers uh, make decisions today. Okay, because despite all those technologies that provide us data, provide us information, and of course provide us in um, uh, the ability to um, to uh, apply inputs in a more a precise way, um, the decisions are mostly taken by by guesswork or the use of generic uh, protocols, generic protocols for pest and disease management, for fertilizers, for any other um, in practice. And we don't blame the farmers for that because the information can be also very confusing. There is a lot of data, a lot of information available, but what do we do with this information. How do we use this data? How do you use this uh, information? And here is where the AI revolution, AI, artificial intelligence, and the AI revolution uh, begins. And so over the past decade, the AI emerged as a groundbreaking technology, and not only in agriculture, it, uh, of course, um, and it's still, everything is still new, all the AI uh, in many industries. Um, but it has, it holds an immense promise for really uh, making a revolution in um, agriculture. And it brings a new approach. It's actually a new approach uh, of data driven decision and uh, decision making and precision uh, farming. Okay. And um, now, before we didn't have the data, we didn't have the data, we couldn't have AI. So the, the AI was, um, became, available or possible just because of the accumulation of data. I'll give you an example, all right? As Evelyn mentioned, I'm in a, a Actec, an entrepreneur in Actec, and I started my first company, I think it was 2008, all right? And in 2012, we decided to make a transition from working on CDs, we had a software company, and we used to sell, to send a CDs, CDs, discs, to customers abroad, to customers, uh, with our program, right? And and actually, then we decided in 2012 to put everything on the cloud. Okay, this was a new word there. Okay, make it on, do it on the cloud, especially in agri in agriculture, and everything became online, right? But the, what happened then 
by the way, is that our sales dropped from significant sales to zero, almost zero. Nobody knew what is, no, nobody understood how it is in agriculture, how it is to use a software online. And many said, hey, we don't have internet on our farm, so we cannot use it, All right? So there was a period of transition here. Um, and I'm talking just about 2012, 12 years ago. 12 years ago, um, there was almost no, no option, no possibility to collect a large amounts of data. All right, and so that's why it's so exciting today, and it's even new where the where the data is actually available. So, um, I'm only 50 years old, and I still remember. I still remember the thermometers in the greenhouses where you measure temperatures, or we went with cameras and films, and we we're making records on the on papers um, in the field. You know, as agronomists, as farmers, then there was transition into data loggers, Excel files, digitalization of all the process, okay? And once it became uh, digitalized, uh, we say, all right, now we can collect data. It's not yet enough, all right? Because if the data is not on the internet, on the cloud, if you cannot collect, collect it massively from really practically thousands or millions of data points, farms and everything, then uh, of course, artificial intelligence may could not rise. Uh, but since the internet connectivity became a, a reality in, in most places today, right? Um, then this enabled the what we call big data. Big data, the collection of large data sets, large amount of data from different parts uh, of uh, the world. And this enables us to create the AI, the artificial intelligence and, and technology. And this is actually what's happening now also in agriculture. Um, so what is AI? We say AI, artificial intelligence, it sounds very nice. It sounds very interesting. Now we know that it needs a lot of the in data, uh, but in fact, the AI is not just one technology, or it's, it's a set of technologies uh, that we use. I'll give some uh, examples here. Uh, one technology of artificial intelligence is machine learning. Machine learning is actually, and we'll see an example for that. Uh, I'll try I'll not, not to be too technical on that, uh, but where we train algorithms, pieces of software to learn from, to learn patterns from big data. Okay. And based on that, make predictions and decisions. That's one uh, domain of uh, artificial intelligence. Another domain is computer vision. Computer vision uh, is teaching computers, and if you think of it, it's, it, it's astonishing, it's amazing, to interpret and understand visual information, to look at an image, at a picture, and say, um, okay, this is what I see, the computer. The computer can say, okay, this is a dog, this is a cat. This is, if we go to pests and diseases, this is a certain pest. This is a different pest, or this is a certain disease. This is a different disease, just from an image that you give it. Um, so that's another domain of computer vision. We have the NLP, which is the natural uh, language uh, processing, where uh, it actually enables us, or computers, to interpret human language. And if, if you think of it, it's not something simple, uh, of course not for a computer, because we have different accents, and uh, we have a different, uh, each of our voice, so different voices, and we, we all sound different. So how do you teach a machine to understand all that? So that's another domain, important domain of, a, of the AI. Um, and then we, we, we have the uh, robotics, where we actually, um, if we, before, you know, we have robots, we can tell the robot, okay, do this, do that, or give, him, uh, give it the specific uh, tasks. But now with AI, we can create autonomous uh, machines that make decisions while they work, right? And can change. They are not just getting specific orders, specific in instructions, but they can actually make decisions and using other uh, domain like machine learning, uh, NLP, computer vision, and all that. Um, and the last aspect here is the predictive uh, analytics which is an important uh, part of uh, artificial intelligence. And here we're learning or we're, we're 
letting the machine, the computer, learn from historical data and based on that, make predictions about future events or trends in the uh, data. And this, of course, takes us now to, to pests and diseases where we can uh, predict the occurrence of pests and diseases. We talked about climate change. We'll see all that. Um, so before I go to, you know, now we, we went a bit technical about uh, artificial intelligence uh, and I'll get back to agriculture in a second, but just before that, just to explain, uh, briefly explain uh, one uh, aspect of the of uh, machine learning, okay, which is the neural network, and it's called neural network because it's like in our brain, basically. It's very similar. And the way it works is that instead of, have, of having an algorithm, a software algorithm that with, with rules and, and all that, we have a we have a set of a lot lots of small pieces of algorithms which are called neurons that transmit data from one to the other in layers where there's the input layer, there is the output layer. But what's interesting here is that each small piece of algorithm has its own like character. It has a, a certain bias and it has a certain, a, what's called a connectivity weight, which means, all right, for example, let's take an example. A, we have a neuron that gets information for different from different and uh, from other layers, other neurons, right? But the, it, this neuron can tell us, or can tell, right? Or can give some kind of a different weight, different importance to a information that it gets, that it gets. So for example, if it gets it from a, this neuron, it might say, okay, we know that I know that this neuron doesn't provide me very reliable information. It's like, think about, think, think about a group of people sitting on the meeting, a, in a meeting with a, a different experts, okay, of different from different domains, talking about a specific topic. Each expert, or if we want to make a decision, we say, okay, this expert is expert a, for irrigation. So if now we want a project about irrigation, we take a, what he says. But a, we also have another expert that is talking about soils. It's important for irrigation, but the weight of um, his his input is might be less for for instance. So this is how it works. This is how it creates like a process of almost, I would say, thinking, okay? So that's just a touch. But the interesting thing that it learns, it, it, we train the algorithms. The algorithms are being trained because we compare the input with the output with actual data from the field. So we make, it makes a prediction uh, and then it starts correcting itself based on uh, information, additional information that we feed into it. All right, uh, that's all about the technical things. I will skip this one and let's go to deep dive into agriculture and pest and disease management. So what are the um, applications of AI in, a, in agriculture? We have different applications, of course, some of them I mentioned, um, like the AI powered precision farming, which are the uh, machines we'll see in a second, a crop monitoring, in pest and disease prediction, all right? In order to um, treat uh, well in time with the right products, specific pest and diseases, uh, or with the right uh, practices, okay? And we need to be able to uh, predict the occurrence of the pest and disease and to act before it's too late, okay? Um, also, weather and climate forecasts, extremely important. Um, autonomous vehicles and then robots. And, and then we have the uh, yield forecast and traceability. Imagine that we can now know it's certain before the season ends, we can already tell what the yield will be. Okay, what quality we will get. It's possible today, all right? And not easy, but uh, still possible because there are always uh, uh, changes. And of course, the AI-based uh, decision-making, that is, this is what we do in a yields up, actually making decisions based on using AI. Um, so let's see here some um, examples. Uh, we have the AI powered, the AI powered precision in farming, where, by the way, precision agriculture, I will not go into too much into terms here, but it referred to a very specific domain in agriculture of applying inputs to specific zones in the field. So precision agriculture, um, 
talks about actually making, creating zones within a large field, all right? And applying different rates of inputs, whether it's a pesticides, fertilizer, seeds, to different zones um, in, the, um, in the field. So now with AI, what we can do is collect data from uh, multiple sources, um, whether it's sensors, weather stations, satellites, historical records from the field, and based on that, create the zones, all right, the zones within a large field, right, and apply um, specific and precise rates right, um, to each zone individually within the same field, okay? And of course, we'll see the machine is capable of doing that because the machine is also operated in, and this is the precision agriculture what they can aim. So, we, but what we can do with AI, right? We can also use it to learn and optimize this zoning, how we create the zones, where to apply more, where to apply less. The machine, the, the algorithms learn it uh, themselves with time, all right? Like I think, you know, um, machine learning is like, I don't know, like a baby. Okay, you have to teach it. You teach it, you teach it, it takes time and then it learns, okay? As much as you have, you provide more information, more data, it learns better. It has more knowledge. This is how it works. Um, so here is an example of a, of zoning, creating different zones and applying different traits of the you know, pesticides, water, sea, whatever, fertilizers. Um, another uh, application uh, is the crop monitoring. Okay. Um, now, yeah, we can take uh, satellite imagery and look at it today. By the way, at this moment, I can access practically any field in the world and get tons of information about this uh, this field, even for free, right? Um, I can know when it was planted. I can know what's the status of the field. I can know what's the status uh, or, or, of the crop in terms of the uh, uh, water content, in terms of the uh, uh, biomass, um, a lot of information, a lot of information that I can instantly get about practically any field in the world today, right? Um, and, it, and it's truly amazing because you just draw the field and the map, you get all this information in seconds, in seconds, um, including the history of the field. Um, okay, so that's nice. But now where AI comes into play here is by analyzing all this amount of information and enabling better decisions, all right? Now, if you think about it, with the AI today, we don't even need a hardware, software, sensors in the field, all right? There is a lot of information that you can get without even having a sensors in, in the field. Um, so the AI processes the data in real time and provide the farmers with real-time insights and recommendations. For example, early detection detection of pests and diseases, all right? If I just see this image now, the, the right image over here, okay, I'm not, I know that the crop, something doesn't grow well in the, where it's a orange and yellow. So I guess something doesn't go well there, but I don't yet know the pattern. I don't know yet if it was the same last year. I don't know how fast it spread. Um, so I don't really know what's going on here, but with AI within seconds, it can tell me, all right, this is the pattern. This is the spread of a certain disease or might be a spread of a certain disease or a certain um, pest, or yeah, this is just the, uh, nor this is a different planting date. So there can be, the AI can identify um, anomalies in the field and uh, patterns and trends uh, in, uh, in the imagery. Okay, using the imagery, it's not using, the, it's using the bands behind it, but anyways, to analyze this data and provide uh, recommendations uh, to the farmer. Now think about it, the farmer, what does he need? He needs only smartphone, computer, that's all. All the other information just comes automatically. Right? Um, so this is a truly amazing and allows a, for um, early detection. Here we're not talking about, we're not talking about the uh, forecasting yet, all right? But this is detection, right? Where something is already happening in the uh, field. Many applications, all right? Not just pests and diseases, many applications, but we focus today on pests and uh, disease. Another 
um, interesting domain that I mentioned is the identification, okay, identification of uh, pests and diseases with using images, using imagery. So yeah, assume that you have this image. Now imagine the computer, the way the computer sees the image. This is how it sees the image. So it recognizes patterns. It recognizes a, a size of a, of spots, for instance, um, and the color and the changes in color. There's a lot of things that it, it can identify, all right? It's visualizing it this way, basically, okay, if we translate it into an algorithm, all right? And, and based on that, okay, give us identification uh, of a certain uh, pests and uh, diseases. Now in agriculture, in reality, this is not uh, very easy, right? Because uh, here uh, we're still missing information. When we just have an image, a picture, we're still missing information. And just as a very quick and simple example, same symptoms on lower leaves and upper leaves of the plant can mean different diseases, right? So very similar symptoms, right? So here there is another, there is the, um, the what we use for instance, are AI bots, right? So it's like an automatic agronomist that communicates with the farmer and asks additional questions to complete the picture, to, to, to understand better um, what's really going on. And this of course increases a lot the, the precision right, or the accuracy of the identification. So like asking small um, questions that are relevant to what the algorithm sees in the, in the picture. Um, now, in order to, there, to predict, okay, to predict, not only to identify, predict pests and diseases, um, there are different uh, models that can be used. For instance, one of them, of course, is the uh, is the weather, weather and climate. Pests and diseases are strongly affected, you say, by um, by, by weather conditions, uh, different uh, thresholds, different weather conditions, development, uh, the, the 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 development from from stage to stage, how it grows, how fast it grows, um, and of course, you have to combine it with crop models. Right, not just the, the pest model or the disease model, because a certain pest or disease will attack the crop at a specific growth stage of the crop itself. So here you need to combine both weather forecasts, very very accurate weather forecast, together with historical data, together with crop models. So there is a lot of information that goes uh, into the algorithms and allows enables the artificial intelligence to um, be able to say, hey, there is a high risk for a certain pest or a certain disease and it's time to act, okay? And in the case I'll show you today, it's also showed you how to act, okay? Um, so here we have wa weather forecast and also climate prediction, not just a weather and also climate because there are different trends uh, in climate, like I mentioned before, which also causes a migration of pests and, and, and diseases. And this just briefly brings me, although it's not the topic today, to um, mitigating climate change, which is a hot, very hot uh, topic today. But if we reduce pesticides, if we reduce uh, fertilizers, um, if we reduce inputs uh, on the farm, if we plant at the right uh, uh, time, if we achieve uh, our yields, this all, if we manage our soil properly, um, this whole L all helps in uh, mitigating um, climate change or at least alleviating uh, its, um, its, its effect and reducing carbon footprint of the, uh, of the farm. Just a quick uh, mention here. Um, now, I already mentioned the, the robots that we can see different examples. I think that this one, for instance, can identify, it uses um, the image recognition to identify weeds, right? So it, it can say, this is a weed and this is the crop and spray or uh, kill just the weed, right? So it goes in the field and just kill uh, the weeds and does not damage the crop. And that's uh, instead of 
spraying the entire uh, field. Now think about the impact of uh, such a thing. And think about how smart this robot is that can identify uh, while it's in the field, can identify the weeds. And not only that, also apply the right rate of um, herbicides, for instance, um, to, to eradicate the, the weed in, without harming the, uh, the crop. So there are many today, there are more and more such uh, robots and uh, machines, uh, autonomous uh, vehicles, they do different uh, tasks. Even the drones today, they can use, do different uh, tasks. And again, um, AI was not yet fully adopted, right? So today we see lots of these technologies, like we can see the, or the, the potential, right? Even with drones, okay? But today we usually we send them to specific places with, with specific tasks, right? But the potential here is to apply AI in the drone that it can make, it can do a, a task, say, autonomously. Um, now, another a way um, to control, manage pests and diseases is by a crop breeding, creating crops that are more uh, resistant uh, to pests and to certain pests and diseases. Very common practice, by the way. Um, but with AI, we can speed up this uh, process and we can make it really, um, really powerful because uh, through the AI, we can analyze vast generic data, genet genetic, sorry, data, okay, and predict the potential outcomes of different uh, process, different breeding of, uh, of, uh, of crops. And so this helps uh, scientists to actually um, create pest and disease resistant resistant uh, crops. And, and this brings me to decision and uh, decision making in uh, agriculture, which is in this case our domain in, uh, in Yields app where we developed a platform that actually takes the data, right? And, but not just telling, hey, we have a problem, but also tells the farmer um, what to do, okay? And we call it dynamic protocols, okay? Instead of the generic uh, protocols, uh, for a pesticide application or uh, any crop, any pest and disease management in practice. Um, it actually guides the farmer on uh, what to do and, uh, and when. So it's, in fact, it's, it promotes sustainable uh, agriculture and it reduces uh, the risks and of course, all the benefits for the yield and for resource optimization, reducing pesticides, reducing chemicals, um, and still being efficient and still being uh, productive. Um, so here, basically, I'll, I'll show you how this uh, works. Um, and this uh, platform, uh, it's in fact, it's not just for pest and diseases today. It's a platform that encompasses uh, most of the agronomic uh, practices. It uh, includes pest and disease management. It includes a... a plant nutrition, fertilization, um, greenhouses, hydroponics, open fields, large crops, uh, broad acre crops, all that. Um, and uh, crop monitoring. And also, we also introduced now recently uh, irrigation, AI powered uh, irrigation, which is very interesting. So how does it work? It actually uses what we discussed before. We use different layers of, of data, okay? Some of this data, comes automatically. Satellites, weather, and soil maps, all right? And integration with the different uh, devices if necessary, okay? Um, but it also uses, so remember we said we need to teach the algorithms in AI, all right? So we have a very large layer of agronomic data, which includes a lot of research data that is uh, analyzed uh, through the system, agronomic databases, um, all this information about the, for example, um, active ingredients, their properties, all this information, we teach the algorithms, we give it the information, and then it already finds the trends, it finds uh, the correlations between uh, everything and optimizes uh, the entire um, operation and creates the dynamic crop protocols. And it also allows uh, input of um, 
data that is usually not used in a, in technology in systems like soil analysis, scouting data. Okay, what we found in the field, right? So the farmer goes in the field, he found some problems, some issues, and you want he records these issues. This all goes into it, it all teaches the 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 algorithms. Um, so different uh, farm and input data, and this all goes through the um, AI algorithms. Some are AI algorithms, some are not, right? And to generate this the, the crop management uh, decisions that the uh, later gets to the farmer or to the machines, okay, in large uh, fields directly to the machines. Um, because we also work with the larger organizations, we also have aggregated data, okay? For example, think about food and beverage companies, think about extension services uh, of, um, of uh, countries, right? Or regions within a country that can get all the data, have a uh, visualize the data, and, but not only that, also assist the farmers in a, in a very uh, fast and effective, uh, effective way. So some of the modules include early warnings about pests and diseases, detection, uh, diagnosis, as we saw with the, the images and bots, and, but more importantly, I think, is the treatment protocols. And here it's uh, not related to pests and diseases, but again, soil health, fertilizers, irrigation, all based on a, all compliance with um, local regulations and guidelines, specific certificates, and all that, because that's also very important. And the certifications, the regulations, the safety of the of the people, uh, sustainability. Um, even now, uh, we are uh, incorporating it into with mainly with large companies to promote regenerative agriculture and uh, practices. Um, so we yeah we won uh, prizes we're award winners we have global um, activity um, in in Africa in North America in Europe in Latin America of course um, so um, we're very very active um, in different types of uh, crops we basically we wanted to start with the uh, with tropical. A crops with trees or, or uh, orchards. However, the reality took us also to the uh, to to the broad acre uh, crops. So today we're very active in the broad acre crops as uh, as well, um, and we work with industry companies. Um, for example, if we you know probably some of you already think, okay, how can this be applied by smallholder farmers? Okay, so we don't work directly with them, but through the uh, industry uh, companies and extension uh, uh, services. Um, but of course, we also, it all the technology uh, supports also small holder uh, farmers that can harness all this, the same, uh, this information, but uh, this in a very practical and easy way, okay, and actually benefit from uh, this amazing technology of uh, artificial uh, intelligence. Um, so, um, Evelyn, just tell me how much time more I have, if I have 10 minutes or so. Yes, please, please, yeah. yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, so let's just uh, go over, see a quick uh, demo of the platform, the web uh, platform, not the, uh, not the app, and we'll see it uh, briefly. So, um, just let me know if you see, I can see if you see my screen, I'll see that. Are you seeing the right screen? Yeah. Okay. So uh, basically here we see a dashboard. This is already Yields app. Okay. This is the technology that we have developed. Uh, it also has a, a, an app for the smartphone, which is very easy to use and very uh, simple. Here we see more information, of course. So I'm showing you the more extended uh, information. Um, but uh, basically, let's see what we discussed about um, crop monitoring. We'll see some parts. Okay. Crop monitoring we can tell the exact uh, growth stage of the crop, at what growth stage it is, how it is re related to previous seasons. Here we see that this season, for example, the green one, the blue is historical, the green is actual, is warmer than previous seasons for the same planting date. In terms of the crop, this is growing degree days. I will not go too much into this, um, but we have the crop model with very precise uh, prediction of the growth stage 
which also later we use it to uh, evaluate the risks of certain pests and diseases, okay? So over here, for instance, it already gave me an alert, okay, about the potential risk of a, of a pest, of a, the, in this case, European corn borer, okay? So the system already tells me there is a high risk for this pest in the field. Go ahead and check your field, okay? Scout your field. Um, we'll get back to, to this in a second, right? Um, all we discussed about monitoring here, we uh, we provide different uh, um, crop indices, and I'll explain the, why they are important. Not just NDVI, which is the the standard, right? But these are very important. We don't only provide the images, but we analyze everything. We analyze the trends, and all the recommendations are based on that. But of course, um, users have access to this uh, uh, this information. Um, so we can see here places in the field that grow and do not grow as well as other um, sections uh, of the field, but with further analysis. Uh, for instance, um, this is interesting. RVI is radar, okay? Uh, it's a different uh, satellite that actually provides a uh, radar data. We'll see it in a second, okay? And it provides different information. So for instance, in barley, we discovered um, that it relates directly it relates to uh, the height of the plant, okay? We thought initially maybe it was a disease or something, but it was soil moisture and height. So this is how the AI works and learns what's the reason behind the different uh, insights that we that we see. And um, so even here, you see, although the NDVI, which is the standard the uh, crop index, show the saturation, rich saturation, the rate show us different data, which tells us, which tells us okay, there are some spots in the field that don't grow. There is a difference. They don't grow uh, well. And here, as we train the system, I mean, the agronomist now goes and he reports a certain issue. He learns for each crop specifically what's going on. And we already have this uh, insights about many, uh, many crops. Really interesting. And there are different uh, indices uh, in here. Now, um, but if we go to pests and diseases, so the system generates, automatically generates, okay, protocols for pest and disease management. Now, this can be organic, this can be, uh, you know, we can define fully organic or with a, a IPM, integrated pest management, uh, etc. So it gives me the treatments, it gives me a schedule. I can see, let's see, all treatments, okay. This is in all treatments. So it gives me the um, protocol for applying a applying a crop protection products. Next week, I don't have any treatments, okay? Um, so I can see this week, this is what I have um, to, to treat. And of course, with all the information, which means um, the application rate, the application volume, um, even the environmental factor, which means that the system always optimizes for the minimum impact, negative impact on the environment, okay? To keep the environment and the workers safe, okay? It also does the um, the rotation of a alternation of products, of modes of action. So we can see here the mode of action. So it keeps the um, alternation of modes of action to avoid resistance. And of course, I can see more information here. Um, even the type of equipment that uh, was used, alternative products that we can use, so all this information is, is here. It's actually here, it tells me it's a reaction treatment uh, based on what you found in the field in this case. Um, and give me the rate. So uh, this is the rate, 100 milliliters per 100 liters and with 400 liters per hectare automatically. It gives me all this uh, information, which is, I can of course uh, manipulate that and adjust it as I wish, but it will give me all this information. Now you see we have one applied, one pending. This is what, this is how you also train. So if the system knows, if I click this, it will mark it as applied, okay? Which means that now the AI knows that we applied this product and it takes it into consideration. So it already registers in its records. Okay, this product was applied. This is how it affected the, uh, the crop or the pest. So it learns all this uh, information and always gets better and better and better. Of course, it's a, it's great even now, okay, but it optimizes, uh, optimizing uh, automatically uh, all the time.
And, and if you remember, I mentioned that you can add uh, scouting data, what you found in the field. Uh, so again, I can see this week, I can see all, and can report also through an app, a very easy to use app. And what I found in the field. Okay, so here, you know, the, that date, I found a pest, full army worm. And I even uploaded an image, okay, which also, it's been automatically analyzed, all right? So we have the, the images uh, from the field, we have what was found, we can even tell the farmer, hey, you're wrong with your, uh, uh, what you think it is, okay? So with identification. And what development stage was detected in the field. So this is a farm input, farmer input that is can be used in the system. So um, we have all that um, information um, here. And as you see, it's really a uh, protocols that they later on can be um, printed, right? And it's a season protocol, all right? They, per season, per week, you can see all this, uh, uh, all this information and manage the different uh, fields and it's created automatically, which means that if I'm going back to the overview, okay, on the overview, it, in a very straightforward way, it tells me your next treatment is on February 22nd. This product, it knows exactly which products are available in each market. Of course, each user can uh, make products available or not available, whatever. Um, it tells me automatically what are the pending activities, okay, on the field, what I need to do next. Um, on the field. Um, so here I created just for uh, pests and diseases. So you can see um, we have all the forecast AI-based uh, calendar, which is, which is actually generated automatically. But of course, you can add activities, um, treatments, beneficial insects, you name it. Different activities can, that, can be, uh, that can be added um, over here. Um, yeah, and here with the water balance, temperatures, and all the same, all this information. Um, so also, I mentioned compliance certificates. Okay, it all works according to uh, you select the certificates, you select the, the regulations according to which you work. The default is the country where the field is, so it takes the country. But in addition to that, uh, there are different certificates and um, regulations that we can uh, add, okay? Um, I can show you in a second, I'll show you the, like what we call the back office, where we manage data from, just briefly that you understand. This is not the AI data because AI data cannot be presented in the UI, okay? AI data is just the result, right? What's inside is like also, almost the black box, but I can show you uh, some uh, uh, biological models, for instance, for pests and diseases, which are used as the baseline for the artificial intelligence, right? Um, and before I show you that, just to mention here, of course, is a, the system includes different uh, practices. It's the uh, all the field tests, uh, soil, not just pests and diseases, uh, soil test results um, can be uh, uploaded here with the location. Um, it will interpret the soil test results. It will give you the, um, I put some values here, values, okay? A, it will give you the interpretation and based on that, create, generate, okay? A, and as you know, everything is related. Pests and diseases are related to, a, sometimes to the soil, of course, to the weather, of course, to the crop monitor, to the crop a, a, a model and growth, of course, to irrig irrigation and all that but it also generates uh, protocols about fertilizers, exactly which fertilizer to use and when to use, at what rate to use, and, and, and so on, including for greenhouses, for irrigation, cost optimization. Um, yeah, so just before, as in last two minutes, okay, I'd like to show you here uh, what goes behind, what's a crop and what's a disease. Okay, or what's it? Let's see some some properties. Okay, of a uh, crops, diseases, etc. So let's see a crop in the system. And again, this is not uh, for the farmer. This we manage this uh, information, and this is information is used as a baseline for the AI, which takes all the real time information and integrates it with the research data, 
okay? And with this data, that the agronomic data that I will show you, and based creates the a dynamic uh, protocols. So a crop, we have a crop model, exactly what the temperatures, uh, how it grows, um, the, the, the crop model, the development of the crop, um, what pest of diseases, all right, to which pest of diseases and disease it's susceptible, okay? Um, so here we have a long list in, in corn. Uh, now, each of these has a model, right? Many of them have both biological model and AI model, and some have just a uh, biological because we need more, um, more information. At which growth stages of the crop it can attack it. So this is how we manage our basic uh, data here, um, nutrient uptake curves, all this information about the nutrients and all that. Best uh, thresholds. Um, now also, um, let's see what's a pest or a disease. Um, so if I take certain, uh, let's see this one for a second, images. So, um, um, yeah, let's take an angle here. So we have those diseases. Okay, this is a disease, for instance, where it is active, um, the biological model of the disease, all the information about that, pests in a similar way, okay, depending on the um, pest itself. Um, so all this is like, Okay, where it's active, what are the conditions, um, what are the triggers for this pest or, or disease? If I'll take a pest, there's also different triggers like a, like a biofix. We have the, the crop model, then we can define a biofix for it and all this kind of information. Agronomic information. This is like agronomic library, huge agronomic library, all right? That is used as a baseline for the artificial intelligence. And then, we talk about recommendations about pesticides. Okay, if it, well, again, when I'm saying pesticides, is the code name also for biological and organic or whatever. But, or let's go to the active ingredients, more interesting. Just, so an active ingredient is actually here. It includes the mode of action of the, of the active ingredient. Uh, its mobility, how it moves within the plant, whether it's a systemic a contact, translaminar, and what are the target pests, what are the specific growth stages of the pest that it attacks, and all this information. So it's huge data layer um, that goes um, also and also generated uh, in some instances automatically, okay, based uh, or has been adjusted automatically based on the uh, AI. Okay, so from time constraints, I will uh, pause uh, uh, pause here. I will say uh, thank you, and of course you can. This is this is uh, you can of course uh, contact me. Um, these are my contact uh, details. Um, if there are any questions, happy to answer in the next uh, few minutes if we have time for that. And thank you very much for listening. Wow, thank you, Guy. Wow. So much intelligence here. Wow, wow. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Guy, many, many people are already asking for your email. Uh, can you write it down in the, in the chat? Yeah, it's here. I can write it also in the chat. Everyone. And there are some questions for sure. And if you can stop sharing so we can see yeah, everybody. Yeah. Good. Um, yeah. Um, guy. I can uh, see the questions. If you want me to review them or you want to. to, to ah, just if you can see them, yeah. yeah there are I questions about the questions. costs. There are questions yeah, about yeah. how how small farmers can work with the system. Yeah, please. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll go over uh, through some uh, questions here. And one question: I'm going from the last two. Uh, for example, would it be sufficient to just to send coordinates of the field and receive information like a uh, monthly rainfall data for the next uh, five years, etc.? So yeah, of course we can. Uh, 
rainfall information for the next five years uh, per, per day, of course, it's something that uh, if someone cracks this one, it's a, a <laughs> it's amazing. But of course, if uh, like predicted predicted a rainfall uh, for uh, for years ahead, okay, in a total amount, of course, uh, all the information. Once you draw the field, there is access. Uh, some of them we give, some of this access we give to the farmers, some not, but we have access to everything, um, to the history of the field, um, to the forecast, uh, actually it's uh, three years, okay, forecast usually. Um, we analyze the history, okay? We analyze 10 years back, as you saw also with the growing degree days and all this. So a lot of information, yes. Just by, by drawing the field, there's a lot of information that uh, you, can, uh, you can get. Um, okay. Let's see. Okay, someone's asking why it's giving four times the, the ECB. It's not giving the four times. It's giving the um, the rate, by the way, the basic rates are depending on the product. So the actual rate will depend on the product that you uh, that you use, okay? Um, okay. Okay, now a question about smallholder farmers, which again, I think. I predicted this question. It's a question that comes in, in, comes up a lot. Okay. Yes, it's applicable for small farmers. We do not work directly with small far older farmers. We cannot do that, of course. Uh, however, okay, we we do work with small older farmers, right? Uh, through the companies, through the extension services. Okay. So um, there are companies that um, either acquired the technology or provided to the uh, farmers, uh, extension services that did that as well. And through that, it goes to the small holder uh, uh, farmer. Um, we give uh, support and, and everything. Um, and the technology is um, was also adjusted for the small holder farmer. So we have a nice app in uh, which uh, small holder farmers can, um, can use just with the relevant information uh, for them. Um, Okay, let's see if there is any other question. I don't have other question. I see about the pricing and everything, but uh, someone asked if it's free, it's not uh, free. We have the uh, pricing is based on uh, in the area, basically, uh, that is covered. And uh, on the type of crop, we have three categories of crop, like the broad acre crops, in like you know corn, soybean, rice, and all that, which is around then four dollars per hectare per year, very cheap price. And then we have the orchards and the greenhouse uh, crops, which are more uh, expensive, the more extensive ones. Um, let's see, guys. Okay, someone is yeah. uh, Ray Reginald. Reginald is asking about languages. What languages? Okay. Yeah. So we can easily. First, right now at the moment, uh, the, the, the platform is available already in English, Spanish, um, Portuguese, and French, okay? Now, any additional language we can add in a matter of, uh, it is uh, very easy, okay? We, we, it's all built in a way that you can support any language in a very, um, very fast. Within a week, we can support any, any additional language, even less than that. Um, I think, um, yeah. wow, there are a lot of mm -hmm. questions. I don't think we will have time for yeah. all the questions. What we can do, I suggest, Guy, is uh, I can make a copy of the chat uh, okay. and send you the emails of uh, the friends here and right. try, you can try to answer some of the questions, but Philip, I, I understand Philip is very worried with the spraying. So can you reply, how does the app know if there is a need for spraying? Oh, <laughs> yeah, this is the this is one of the major uh, features, uh, of course. Okay. Um, yeah, no, there are many considerations here about the, the need of spraying. It depends on the crop growth stage. It depends on the, the available products. It depends on the specific pest or disease and the risk 
for this pest of disease. I don't know if you noticed, but we have, there is some like prophylactic or preventative sprays, okay? And there are reaction sprays. It depends on sometimes on the threshold, on the economic threshold of the pest or the, the disease, which can be defined. It depends on the active ingredients. It depends on the, um, the mobility of the active ingredient. It depends on the certificate, certification that, that is, that you need to apply uh, to apply uh, to apply to so um, to comply with sorry so there are many 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 considerations um, if I showed you the algorithm chart it's a huge one and then you have the AI which is another black box so so it's a huge um, uh, decision making okay um, so it analyzes the history it analyzes fields around um, lots of information. And then it decides on a, a spray and gives you a recommendation for the product to spray, all right, or the active ingredient or the product. Um, and then, of course, also cost optimization. The rate will depend also on many factors. The rate will depend um, on the growth stage of the crop, uh, on the severity of the pest or disease infestation. So many, many considerations come into play here. Um, Guy, can can the uh, could the friends here uh, find more information in the in your web page? I see somebody here it was very nice and copy the link of the web. Yeah, I'll send you another link. I'll send you another link or in the chat here because um, all right, um, um and so I send another one and. Yeah, also feel free to register with us even for the webinars. We do um, we do webinars on specific uh, topics and showing the platform. Um, so con connect with me and uh, you'll be invited also to, uh, to, to, to activities here and to additional demonstrations, uh, webinars. Wait, I, I don't see the, the link ready to put it. I said uh, one of the comments, it's now with me. Ah, can you put it to, for everybody here? Everyone, ah, please. so this is specific, I'm sorry, yes. So in the meantime, I tell here to people who came in later, uh, we are recording the, the presentation and uh, it will be on our YouTube page for sure on Thursday. I think um, I uh, I'm well. You see in the chat now uh, the web page link from for for the for yields up. Um, guys, somebody wants to know how what your computer program what's what you are using in yields up. Yeah, there are different technologies that we're using. It's a secret for sure, huh? No, no, no it's not a secret. <laughs> uh, I'm sure asking about the technology, but there are different uh, different technologies that are being used here. Uh, <laughs> uh, what, uh, if you want to look to the questions, Guy, in the meantime, I will put here in the chat also uh, the links uh, from our uh, YouTube page and our Facebook page where all these uh, webinars are normally published, okay? So here, this is the YouTube page and our Facebook page. Yeah, one second. Here it is for everybody. Okay, please copy it. And um, uh, and uh, yeah, agriculture is changing, huh? Um, before we say bye bye, I think we we could we do a picture with all together here. 
let's let's open for a few minutes your cameras okay let's take a picture from all of us we should have bring uh just brought a, a, a cup of wine for doing uh, cheers but <laughs> Uh, I, I would like to tell you that we had something like 220 people together in, in some moments. Now we have 170 and who knows, from all over the world. So everybody smiling, please. <laughs> we are surely putting a, a post in the Facebook. So, uh, well... Dear friends, first of all, guys, thank you so much. Thank you for much for your time. Uh, thank you for putting so much knowledge in this and for making agriculture different. And maybe, you know what? I, I think uh, this is doing for sure agriculture much more interesting for the young people. We have always so many questions about what will happen. Young people, the, they don't want to go into agriculture anymore. It's not interesting. It's a lot of work. And I think this makes agriculture very, very um, challenging somehow. Uh, and I think it, it helps uh, to bring the young people into the sector. Um, dear friends, Thank you so much to everybody for being with us. Um, keep in touch through the Facebook page. We are publishing there all the information. If somehow, if someone have some interesting ideas, don't forget you can contact our embassies also in your countries. We have a lot of Mashaf alumni who could be part of agricultural projects who can help you in some professional topics. Uh, for those who have been here already, nice to see you. For those who uh, haven't been here, still hope to see you soon um, and to host you here in Israel. I hope so. It will be in, in the short time. And uh, Shalom from Israel. And let's do together a better world, hopefully. Uh, I will open. I will open the the mic so we can say shalom, and you can say shalom. And uh, till soon. Shalom to everyone. Shalom to everyone. Shalom. 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 Shalom.